Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, we discuss the trio of Rowan quads that I have received in the mail and I've been testing out for review. I am so excited to bring this video to you guys because I have been sitting on these guys waiting because these are truly some precious gems of mine. And so if you are ready to see how this look took place using the 52 Degrees Cool Palette and you want a comprehensive review and swatches slash comparisons of these eyeshadows, please keep on watching. We're getting into it right now. So today will be a showcase of these beautiful little jewels, these precious gems of my collection. I'm so excited. Um, if you're wondering what the hair is on my head, I have nothing to say to you, but why not? The long and short of it is I am just sick and tired of looking at my own hair all the time and it is too processed and damaged for me to do any further heat styling. And so we are going to be rocking many different colors of hairstyle in the future and get used to it. So let's talk about Rowan. Oh, I almost dropped that and it would have been a tragic day indeed. So these are my Rowan quads. I will do juicy up close shots in a second. And I pretty much just want to play with them on my eyes today. I won't be able to play with all of them on the eyes today because there's three, which which means that there are 12 shadows in here and I certainly cannot do that. But what I can do is a thorough comparison of the ones I've had this one the longest. This is the 75 degree warm, which is interesting because 75 degrees does not feel all that warm to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one is the oldest one in my collection. I got it because it was in stock in person. And then of course I've got the cool and then the 1111, which I'm a little upset that they didn't choose like <laughs> something similar like another temperature but yes it has been quite some time since i placed the order for these if you remember i did my thousand dollar dream sephora purchase thing spoiler alert this was part of my sephora purchase there were other things a part of that shopping spree when i said that i had set apart some money so i will do a video actually recounting everything that i purchased that day which finally can be filmed because now these items have come in and they are accounted for so i ordinarily would definitely do the 11 11 today as a first impressions but because i have this cool TikTok girl look going on. I was thinking we could do like a cool tone look. We could do a little bit of like a Doja Cat-esque type thing. So if that sounds interesting to you, please keep on watching. We are getting into it right now. How do I say this? It's very uncomfortable having like a wig on my head, but at the same time, I've already installed it. Not really installed, but you know, like I set it up and everything, and so I don't want to take it off. Uh, I have so many swatches on my hands from earlier today, just playing with makeup, so please do not mind all of that stuff. I think what I might do is just like makeup on the second half of my face, like from my bangs downwards, because you can't really see the top part. <laughs> so we're just gonna pretend that doesn't exist. I am priming with a sparkly primer basically just anything that gives my skin a little bit of luminosity okay so priming is done i feel like my skin has been in very very poor condition um recently so that's been fun i have to cover up all these spots so let me grab a concealer guys i ordered the original beauty box which is that like og huge like makeup um not counter, but it's like this huge acrylic organizer, and I'm so excited for that guy to come in the mail because right now all of my palettes are just taking up space where I film, which is in the dining room. <laughs> and so all of my makeup is just like sitting here in giant bins, not appropriate for anyone's home, um, but especially not because we live in a one bedroom apartment, and so it's pretty small space is limited, so you really can't be taking up space permanently like this. So my plan was to get the beauty boxes, put them kind of on our bookshelves so that way I could pull what I needed for the video and then, you know, it wouldn't have to be sitting out. So that is super exciting. <laughs> um, I don't think it'll come until next week though, so I definitely will film a video on reorganizing my beauty collection and giving you kind of like a tour of what I have because one, I love those videos myself and two, I think they do fairly well in terms of interest. <gasps> I forgot to put a spotlight on me. I'm so sorry for that atrocious lighting earlier. Um, yeah, this whole um, studio setup is quite an ordeal to to set up, to get in and out of. It's like really hard for me to adjust my camera settings, um, but I do it because I just love the job, man. I just live for it. Okay, we are being super lazy and stopping basically at the forehead. Not going to go much further than that. Um, anyway, yes, I will do a video about that collection in terms of how I set it up, what goes in my collection. We all know a good time lapse is better than any medicine the doctor orders, so I am personally invested. Is it like a good idea for me to be doing 
a tutorial with a wig on my head already. Uh, <laughs> so I'll be doing that and then I will be walking you guys through my collection because I feel like those videos also tend to have pretty good traction. I think people are generally interested in that kind of thing. I'm going in with my AOA Buildable Studio Foundation. I know for a fact this is one I don't like and yet here I am insisting that I make it work for me. I'm going to put the drops directly onto the foundation brush. Hopefully that will make it a little bit easier to manage, but I don't know. At this point, I'm just trying to experiment with different ways of using this product because I really remember hating it when I first got it. Do y'all think I'm too close to the camera? I oftentimes feel that way, that I'm too close, but I also can't imagine filming from much further and having you guys see anything that I'm doing. So <laughs> let me know if I'm too close. It's sometimes really hard for me to get an objective opinion. I always feel like I'm so pale, like on um, the screen, it looks like I'm making my foundation really, really light. But then if you look at my, um, if you look at my chest and my neck, like my chest is so much lighter than my neck. So I'm actually much paler than this. It's actually crazy, um, but I don't want to actually do my like chest skin tone because then I actually would look like a crazy ghost. I actually genuinely would look like a ghost. Um, okay, so let's talk about Rowan. Um, before we do that, I'm going to go into my Chanel blush. This is all I've been wanting to wear lately. I'm sure you guys have seen in the videos I've been using. This is in the color Rose Bronze. Apparently, it is Chanel's most um, popular blush color, but that doesn't surprise me. The color of this product is so <laughs> lovely. It's so heavenly. Every time I open it, oh, it makes me super happy. It's like super, um, mm, what is the smell? Like roses? Maybe roses is the right word, but it is really divine. I'm going to apply this kind of as a base blush. There's going to be more on top, but we are just going to apply a little bit over the cheekbones in a really kind of blushy way. I'm now going to take a smaller cheek brush. This is the Buildable Cheek by Sonia G. Okay, by Benefit, we've got this blush palette. I'm going to go into, let's do Sugar Bomb. I feel like Sugar Bomb has some pretty cute colors. I'm going to go into the lower quadrant where there's none of that golden shift. I'm just going to hit the center of the cheeks one more time. This palette also has a delicious scent. Mm, I live and die for this amazing smell. I'm now going to take a tiny little fan brush and cookie, hit the tops of my cheekbones, and I'm actually going to go straight into my brow bones as well. Of course, I'm not scared of too much highlight. There's highlight in my blush, and there's highlight um, kind of in both, there was highlight in both of the products I was using, so I'm definitely not scared of shining a little bit. I personally really like to get my nose bridge because I don't have much of a nose bridge, and then I like to get the tip of my nose. That kind of gives me the look of having a nose without actually having a nose. Of course, you have to highlight based on what you have and want to play up. I certainly agree that we shouldn't all be contouring and highlighting the same exact way because it's not going to look great on everyone. I'm now going to take a large fluffy brush. I'm going to go into kind of just like a medium tone. I'm kind of mixing tones all over the place. I'm just going to get into the crease so that there's a little bit of something contouring my eyes because I kind of want a loose very very loose look can you see a little bit of contour on my eyes at this point I think I'm ready to move on to the quad so let's scoot you guys in closer and we will do the eye look together hello are we up close and personal yet so I am going to be staring into this tiny mirror on this compact and explaining my process to you so there are four different shades it looks like the shades are Basque Rendezvous Yep and Meow I'm guessing because they didn't really label which one is which and I don't really know what I want to do but it looks like we might be able to use at least three of the colors if not four so of course um, this is gonna be a very shimmery look given that everything in here has some shimmer I'm gonna go into that first color which is called Basque I'm gonna go to the inner corner Oh, delicious. Oh my gosh. This is real-time reaction, y'all. I've never used this on my eyes. I have used the warm quad, but not the cool quad, so I am familiar with the formula and how it works, but I'm not familiar with the colors and how they layer and play. I'm now going to go up into the brow bone with that same color. Now, remember, we haven't done the brows yet, so I'm totally okay with, like, smushing my fingers up in there. Remember, there also is already a little bit of cookie highlight on the brow bone, so this is really just to add that extra glitter. I'm now going to go into that um, purple color, Rendezvous, maybe, and this looks like a beautiful mid-tone color. Now, this formula and the first, they all have different 
textures because of the, I think they're called reflex. <laughs> um, and basically the more reflect there is in a shadow pan, the more chunky and kind of prone to lifting and flaking off the formula is. This product is one of the like satin shades in the, in the quad, which has a little bit of a more traditional cream formula texture. It doesn't feel like it's flaking off in chunks. It doesn't feel like you can gouge a hole in it. It just is kind of like a pressed cream pigment. I'm going to apply this color into the outer corner and it immediately on contact, it feels a little bit like grease paint which has a very negative connotation. I don't mean to scare you by saying it feels like grease paint. I mean that it feels quite emollient to the touch. It doesn't feel like it's going to dry down anytime soon. And I can say that eventually, I think, if put into a thin enough layer, they do kind of dry down and they don't crease on me. At least I've worn these pretty much all day long and never had any creasing issues. I also, mind you, have small and very hooded eyes which I think is the prime candidate for someone who is prone to creasing. And yet, I haven't really noticed any issues with this. I know Hannah, um, who has also hooded eyes and very much so builds up the outer corner of her looks, does get creasing. And she's shown a wear test in which she's got a pretty severe crease down the middle of her eyes. I think that might be because of the amount of product that she uses compared to the comparatively little amount that I use. Um, so if that gives you an indication of what the product is like. I also think that it is a little bit reassuring that in many ways you can control some of the variables. I'm now going into this silvery blue color, probably called Meow, but also I don't know. And upon first impression, it feels also like that similar kind of harder to gouge out formula. Everything is kind of like neatly pressed in there. Nothing is kind of pouring out. I think if you were to go in that first color, Basque, with a finger and kind of rub, it would kind of like just gush out of the pan. You lose a lot of product. And so it wouldn't be too wise to do that. Ooh, this is gorgeous. This is really quite blue. Oh, I love. I'm tapping out with my pinky finger. And this color is spreading very easily. Really quite broadly. I feel like it's spreading a lot easier than the gray color that we just used before. I'm gonna use whatever is left over on my finger to get the other eye. So this has been described as like the ultimate cool girl palette and I feel like for sure I feel that is the case. Mm, I do like that. I'm now going to go back in with my first finger and get into that first color basque tap again just to get some of that chunky glitter. I think the eye look is done. I think I'm just going to do some liner and mascara. I think all in all, we can talk through this as I am <laughs> working, but I think all in all, this palette is probably best suited for cool girls. And what I mean by cool girls is that I think if you are someone who wants to look like you have tried pretty hard um, and you want an effective and interesting look, but you don't want to actually have tried too hard, like by painstakingly going through the process of um, selecting shadows and like using, you know, layering methods, I think this is a way to get you that look really quickly. I think at the end of the day, everything looks really melty on the eyes, kind of like a sorbet. Everything is really elegant and disco-y. I think when they called their product Disco Eye, it was very, very accurate because it does kind of look like a disco ball on the eye, but nothing too done, nothing too polished. doesn't remind me that much of these Stila shadows because those ones are very kind of finishing touches on a refined cake. This is the whole dessert in one you're not really expected to dress it up too much. It's meant to look kind of rough around the edges, sexy in like a sooty, dirty way. I don't know, I kind of dig it. This is definitely not my usual take on makeup, but I feel like I've been trying new things and I kind of like it. I kind of don't like how I messed up my eyeliner, but alas, we are all human and I'm not good at this, even though I've been doing it for so long. Um, but this is the look. This is the um, effect of the eyeshadow in practice once you've got everything put together, I feel like it's not too bad. It's not too shabby, but I am a little concerned that the blush isn't holding up all that much. Why don't we do lips first and then we'll come back to assess. I'm going to be really bold today and I'm going to try this one. This is the Protector Liquid Matte Ink from Maybelline. I actually love this formula. I should stop talking. Give me a second. Okay, so I have done the lips. 
I uh, chose this color just because I felt like why not? Um, I was already doing such a dramatic look, I might as well. And speaking of dramatic look, might as well. I'm wondering if I should just put on lashes. No, I'm just gonna go to the gym after this. So I felt <laughs> feel like I probably shouldn't put on lashes. So let's scoot you guys out and we'll talk a little bit about the rowing quads in general. So let's talk about these eyeshadows. I've been playing with these eyeshadows for around three weeks now and um, well, I shouldn't say these eyeshadows. I've been playing around with the warm quad for around three weeks now, and then the other ones have just come in the mail, but I am familiar enough with the formula that I feel comfortable reporting on it. Um, because I've tried on the blue one, and the blue one reported, the blue one worked pretty much exactly the way I expected it to. So, who is this eyeshadow palette for? I feel like these eyeshadow quads are definitely for someone who likes a high impact look without any of the effort that a high impact look can take traditionally. I think this is a viable, luxurious option for those of you guys who want something very high impact, very chic, very fun, very cool, in very aesthetically pleasing packaging, and they don't want fuss. Um, the only other company I can imagine having a comparable formula would be ColourPop, and I say this kind of knowing what I'm getting myself into, but personally, I'm a huge stan of the Super Shock shadows. I feel like they're so good. I feel like in terms of the quality you get for the product and the price point, there is almost nothing that can beat a Super Shock shadow. I'm going to give you an example right now. I have mentioned ad nauseum that in this palette by ColourPop and Pony Park, I think, um, there is nothing that I love more than this color called Pop. And I kept saying that I feel like nothing could rival this product except for maybe one of the sparkly shades from the Rowan 1111 palette. And lo and behold, I got it. And here is the comparison I have to tell you guys about. So I hope that shot was telling in you know, trying to describe that you can achieve a similar really beautiful glittery look with your ColourPop shadows. Um, I, of course, didn't have a dupe in terms of the actual colorway, but this is the only Super Shock shadow formula that I feel like replicates the Rowan look. And I guess the convenience of ColourPop is that it's not a cream formula that kind of stays greasy on the eyes. It totally just goes on the eyes as a cream, but then it sets down and it's totally fine, and you can wear it all day long. You don't have to really tap out creases. There is no chance of it being creasy. Whereas I do know that with some people, you do get creasing with the Rowan shades. So I guess the barrier to entry is higher, and the chance of having complications is also higher. However, at the same time, you are dealing with much more convenience. It is much more travel friendly than dealing with even a palette or a super shock shadow like quad that you like keep in packaging, or in any case, it's like you know an entire separate container, right? This is much more travel friendly, not to mention it's more chic, it's easy to touch up, it comes in like a velour pouch. The whole experience is very much so rooted in a different... I guess the way I would explain this is that the whole experience of Rowan versus Colourpop is that this one is rooted in a certain identity that is much more elevated, it's much more assertive, I guess, of its chicness, and I just feel cool holding this. I feel like a cool girl. I felt so compelled to be a cool girl that I even put on a dark, dark lip. I never do this anymore. So <laughs> I guess it does tell you a little bit about the kind of person that this Rowan Quad is inspiring me to be. So in that way, I do feel like it's worth it. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about relative worth in makeup. I do not foresee these palettes lasting me longer than a year. I feel like given regular use, it will completely be panned and rotated out of my collection relatively quickly because these shadows are so convenient. I feel like if you are an everyday woman who wants to wear makeup to work but you don't like fussing but you do like something sparkly, this is perfect for you. I know a lot of people talk about like the like Too Faced Natural Matte Eyes or like Naked Basics and stuff like that. Yeah, that is great if you are a basic girl who wants matte shadows, but what about the basic girl who wants some shimmer on the eyes and that's it and she wants to go? That is me when I am not trying to do the most. And absolutely, I feel like this is the perfect solution to that, right? It is a bunch of doing the most eyeshadows in three different colorways, and I'm sure they will release more, that are easy to put on, easy to throw on, easy to fix throughout the day. They are not fussy um, in the sense that you need to like build and build and build with different brushes and the whole package deal is very compelling. So you might be wondering, Oriel, you are waxing so poetic about these things, what are the downsides to these Rowan quads? Well, I kind of mentioned it earlier. If you are someone who is looking at cost per use as a really important factor in whether or not you are going to buy a product, I feel like you might want to look elsewhere. I know this is a really far stretch, but if you were to compare my Tom Ford quad to my Rowan quad, which one do you think has more product? Let's actually take a look. This one has around 10 grams of product, and this one has 4.2 grams of product. 
And of course the prices are not the same, but in terms of quantity, you can kind of see which one is bigger and will last a little bit longer. And of course, on top of that, the Rowan products are cream and cream products tend to be used up a little bit faster. And of course their expiration date comes a little bit faster. I'm not worried about these things drying out because I know if you go to a Sephora, they leave those testers out all the time and you can come back week after week and those products are still totally fine. I think it must be something about the way they formulated these products to not really dry up over time. I do know like ColourPop products, something will change in the formula and it dries up over time. Same with the Stila shadows and stuff like that. And um, these ones just don't. They kind of remain a little bit emollient on the eyes. Like if you rub your eyes, the shadow will rub off. Like the film of shadow will slip right off of your face. And I think that has to do with why these things don't dry out very much. However, if you are the kind of person who is buying makeup for the joy or its functionality in your life and you're not really looking at cost per use, these are incredible. I feel like you can't discount the emotional pleasure, like the visceral pleasure associated with makeup. For me, makeup is as much an art form, as much a practicality, a utility of everyday life as it is therapy. <laughs> it's a therapy. It's me playing with something that makes me happy, um, something that makes me feel transformed or like I am a certain kind of woman. Like. The hair today it makes me feel like a certain kind of woman. The lips make me feel like a certain kind of woman. And of course, eyes are the window to the soul. And so we feel a certain kind of way when we wear sparkly, expensive eyeshadow too. So there's a time and place for these kinds of products. All I will say is these are beautiful. I will leave you with some swatches and some overlays on the different colors. If you are a, someone who is looking for a cool toned palette, I think this one is perfect for you. It has that one lighter shade either for your inner corner or your lid, depending on your skin tone and what flatters you. And then three relatively similar in value but different in tone eyeshadows that you can put either on the lid or in the outer corner or what have you. I think there are a couple different ways to wear these either in terms of one shadow looks or two shadow looks or even three shadow looks if you want something really watercolory. But for cool lovers, I feel like this one is definitely a hit. For anyone who is generally in the camp of wanting to look warm and flushed, 75 degrees warm is awesome for you, but I feel like there's slightly less color variation in this one and I will throw swatches up for you. But I do feel like the two browns in this, although slightly different of course, they are relatively similar. And I feel like there didn't need to be two of these in the same palette. I would have preferred if they just kept one and replaced another with, I don't know, maybe a truer gold or um, something a little bit more peach. But this is, in general, a nice warm palette. I feel like a dark, dark brown could have been used. But again, I don't feel like any of these palettes are trying to be full palettes. They really don't strike me as trying to be quads that you wear like as a quad. It really strikes me as four single shadows and for that reason I do feel like this is a perfect fit for anyone who is looking for some basic warm tones that are sparkly and catch the light. And of course my favorite, I don't think anyone was <laughs> surprised when they found out that 1111 is my absolute favorite recommendation out of the bunch. I feel like this one is the most unique of the three. It is the most balanced of the three and for that reason I feel like they tried to make it an exclusive maybe to get more traffic on their site or something like that. But this one as you can tell has one really exquisitely textured eyeshadow. It's that one called situation and you can actually see the flakes of pigment the reflect that actually is in here on the eyes it is like a disco ball it's actually beautiful i feel like sprinkled over the eyes like really smeared in a really thin fine layer gives your eyes this ultra beautiful disco eye look i wonder if this is the same thing as the disco eye because i feel very grateful to have experienced this formula then you've got a cooler kind of warm charcoal brown which I feel like is the most practical in terms of deepening the outer corner. It feels like the most practical to me grayish tone slash brownish tone in these collections because I feel like the browns are very blah and you can find them everywhere and then out of the gray set, gray blue set, I feel like none of them have really been gray. Most of them have been either blue or brown. So this one is the truest in a, in a gray neutral sense sparkly and wonderful. Then you've got two ruddy shades. One is a ruddy rust and one is a ruddy coral and both of those are also absolutely stunning. Of course, no one is surprised I like them. And of course, I do believe that these two are also a little bit similar in color. And if you are someone who doesn't like pinks, then this one is just not for you. Half of the palette is pink. If you are someone who likes pink but you don't love pink on the eyes, I also don't think this is for you because there are two pinks and that amounts to around $20. All in all, I feel like these are wonderful palettes. I'm so glad I have them in my collection so I can pull them out and feel like a beautiful, chic, minimalistic disco ball that overpaid for her products. And yet I don't regret these purchases at all. 
I will talk a little bit more about the giant Sephora purchase in another video I make probably right after this. So if you're interested in that, please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that way you will be notified when that video goes up. Please don't forget that I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I love you guys very much and I'll see you very soon. Bye!